Within this tutorial, we're gonna pick up where we left off from part one and actually add in a blend from the player camera into the cine camera as it moves through the world. We're also gonna set it up so the player can't actually move while the camera's animating. This way they can't hop off a cliff by accident. I'm gonna drop a little pro tip before we get going. Now, if you lose your actor inside of your actual world, you can't find it here and you can't find it anywhere inside of your outliner, but you know you put it in here, you can actually do this. Come down to your content drawer, right click on the asset, and then come up here to asset actions. And what you're looking for is select actor or actors using this asset. When you click on this, it'll actually find it inside of your level. And if you still can't see it, you can actually just kind of move it up and down and it'll actually start to render again. This happened to me about five seconds ago and this is how I fixed the issue. To add the blend between the two cameras, we need to go ahead and open up the sequence. Now I do have the sequence selected, so I can go ahead and just click this little button over here. This is open level sequence. And there it is. Now, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and right click on this camera cuts track, this very top one. And at the very top of this, there's a little checkbox that says can blend. So go ahead and click on that. So now if we hover over this little area and it's right here, this is really, really tiny. There's one here and there's one right here. You'll find these little tiny triangles. They're like super, super, super small. What we need to do is to click on one of those triangles and I'll click and drag and I'll move this over. Let's say I want a blend of 30 frames. And then on this right side, I want to go ahead and do the same thing. Now, again, I do want to hit the triangles, not this bar. If I grab the bar, it's actually moving how much the camera is going to be shown inside of this area. And I want it to be filled the whole way and then just use the blend and bring this one over. So there we go. Now you'll see that we have little arcs right here. We have a little blend that goes in and out. So if we go ahead and try this, let's go ahead and play from here. We should now see this actually blend between the two cameras. And it's really fast, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna set it up so that it lasts a little bit longer. And fortunately for us, this is really easy to do, especially if you're in 5.1. So what I need is a little bit more time on my timeline. So down here in the bottom right, I have this 180. That's how many frames I'm currently using. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 400. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this section right here and I'm gonna drag it to the right. This way I can see all of that time in there. And I just want to extend this basically from 150 frames to 300 frames, like so. Now I want to make sure that the camera is actually going to be taking up this entire shot. So I'm going to just click and drag this bar over, like so. And then this section right here is actually going to expand and keep everything in proportion as far as the keyframes are concerned. So see my keyframes down here below. I'm actually going to close this one so we can see them. So we have one, two, three sets of keyframes here. And if I click and drag on this little section, you'll notice that they expand and everything is staying in proportion, which is great. Now, because these blends were so fast, I'm gonna go ahead and just extend these as well. So just push this over a little bit. I'll go ahead and grab this one. I'll go ahead and push this one over. Whoops. Let's make sure that we grab the little tiny triangle. There we go. Like so. So now when I go ahead and play this, this should last a little bit longer. So I'll go ahead and back up, right click, go ahead and say play from here. Oh, good times. And I'll go ahead and just jump into this. But you'll notice that I still have control over my character. So we need to adjust this in a minute. But what's cool is even if I put my character way over here on the side somewhere off camera, the camera does actually cut back to them. So Maybe that's an effect that you want. In my case, that's not, so let's go ahead and adjust that. So the idea behind this is that we need to disable the input on the pawn, and then we need to enable the input again once this thing has finished doing its little animation. So we need to do a little bit of math. And if you've never done Blueprint, that's fine. I got your back. Just follow along and you should be okay. So first thing first, let's go ahead and open up that level Blueprint again, because this is where all of our code is. So again, we just come up to this button, go ahead and click on that, and go ahead and choose Open Level Blueprint. Now let's move this off to the left just a little bit because we're gonna go ahead and add to this. And what we need to do is go ahead and pull a wire off of our play here and we're gonna go ahead and type in disable input. So I'm gonna choose this one right here and we need two things. We need a target, what are we gonna disable? And then the controller that we're going to be disabling as well. Now I'm using just a regular third person here and everything's gonna be generic. So you may need to modify this code depending on how your game is set up. So in this case, the target is actually going to be the player pawn. So we can go ahead and get the player pawn and the controller is going to be the controller that's actually controlling our pawn. So for me, this is the get player controller. Cool, so now that we've actually disabled this, we need to go ahead and enable it again after a certain amount of time. So the question is, how long is this going to take? Well, this is where the math comes in. So what we can do is we can come back over here to our sequence player, this little node right here, and what I'm gonna do is pull a wire off of this. I'm actually gonna add in a reroute node, just hit R-E-R, -E -R, 
And from this sequence player, we need to get the actual sequence that's inside of it. So I'll just pull out from here and I'm gonna go type in get sequence. There we go, right down here, get sequence. And this get sequence, we can go ahead and get the end of it. So from the return value, I'll pull out another wire and we'll say get playback end. There it is. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and bring this one up here. Go ahead and connect these. Now this playback end is where the math is going to begin. And our return value off of this, we need to actually divide by our frames per second. And if we go back to our sequence, we can see that we are actually running 30 frames per second. So we just need to divide this number by 30. Let's go back into here. So we'll grab off of here and we'll just go ahead and do a divide. And for the value, we'll set in 30 like so. And then we need to set up a delay after this. So this execution pin will go into a delay. And our duration is this math right here. So we just pull this off of here and it will add in a new little conversion node like so. From the delay, all we need to do is actually then enable the input back on our player. So to do that, we can go ahead and come out of our completed. We'll type in enable and look for enable input. So it's down here. And our target and our controller are exactly the target and controller that we had over here. So we can go ahead and control C, copy these and control V, paste them there. And we can just connect these back up like so. So there we have it. This is all the code that we need. And I will go ahead and post this in the development community snippets so that you can go ahead and see this at any time. So let's go ahead and compile this and check it out. So compile, save it, jump back in. Let's go ahead and play from here. So I should be able to jump up here. The animation will start and I cannot, as much as I spam the move WASDs, I can't move my character at all. And I'll just hold down the W so you can definitely see this. So when it comes back to life, there we go. And now I have control over my player. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and set up a camera using the sequencer. You can get it to fly from one place to the next. And you can also set it up so that when the player actually walks into a trigger, you can actually have a fade or a blend between the two cameras. And while the camera is actually animating, you can keep the player from jumping off of the edge just in case that's something that they're going to try. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you when I can. And don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.